Welcome to the Student Pilot Podcast. My name is Simon Callis, a flight school owner. Each week, myself and my guests will be talking all things flight training and beyond to help inspire, motivate and support you on your journey to becoming a private or commercial pilot. Okay, so welcome to the podcast. Today we have Dave Stewart, one of our recently passed PPL. So exciting news, Dave. Exciting news, Dave. Um, you just purchased a TB10 or a share in a TB10. Um, is that something you saw from the outset that you wanted to do or is it something that came on a bit later? Uh, it, it came on a little bit later, really. Um, I started off wanting to fly. Um, didn't really know where to start until uh, until I come down and met you guys. Um and um, found out I was flying quite a quite a lot really. Yeah. Um, I think going for the TB10, I, I saw it in the hangar right at the very start, and I thought, oh, wouldn't mind well, uh, to keep that away from you, mate. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't mind owning uh, owning something like that a bit later on, and uh, yeah, the the opportunity uh, arose and. That was that. How much money they needed to spend? That's it, it. Like, exactly. Off a few months, yeah, boys. just 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 waited. Uh, yeah, yeah, waited until I did the engine and props and whatnot, and then bought <laughs> in after. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. So, for those of you who aren't aware, it's possible to buy shares in aircraft. It's usually in a group rather than as individuals, as, like as a syndicate. Um, typically, um, you have an upfront cost to buy into the aircraft. And then that's proportional to the size of the share that you, you buy and the value of the aircraft. Um, monthly costs, usually a contribution to the insurance and hangarage costs, and then the aircraft's usually charged out uh, by the hour. Um, there are other options such as non-equity um, share groups, whereby effectively you're renting the aircraft from a group. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't actually own the aircraft though, it's more like a, a flying club type thing, but you have exclusive access to the aircraft. So, Dave, can you tell us um, a little bit about how yours works? Yours is an equity share, isn't it? It so, is, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so we'll talk about equity shares and just tell us a little bit about your syndicate, cost to operate the aircraft, and that kind of thing, really. Yeah. So in the uh, in the uh, syndicate, we've got eight members um, mm. in total. Uh, to start off with, uh, the the initial buy-in is the most expensive yeah. part. You know, you 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 really need to to have the money backed yeah. behind you, uh, and, and and also the the time to to fly it as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I paid roughly uh, twelve thousand uh, to to buy a, a sort of just over twelve percent share. Did your missus know yet? Or? Uh, she will after the podcast, I would imagine. <laughs> Busted. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, <laughs> And then every month we uh, we all, all like members put um, around one hundred and fifty pounds in, and like okay. say it goes to hangarage maintenance. Uh, and then there's the um, the wet hour uh, to okay. fly to fly up with fuel as well, which obviously fluctuates a little with uh, fuel price, with fuel prices. Yeah, but yeah. Um, okay. So what would a typical hour in your aircraft look like, cost wise? Um, at the moment it's one hundred and twenty five pounds mm-hmm. an hour wet. Um, and that's um, that's sort of chop times mainly, um, yeah. slightly different in, in, in that aircraft. It, uh, so what's that, about 45 quid towards the aircraft and then the rest of the ex- Exactly, yeah. yeah. So that's, that's going towards, obviously, the wear and tear on the aircraft, the oils, uh, a yeah. little bit more to maintenance and whatnot. And, uh, okay. and then it all goes into a big pot uh, of a club's account. And yeah, you know, when yeah. something needs doing on the plane, it's hopefully, uh, hopefully to, there. to cover and, it. And to yeah. cover it, yeah. So tell us how you came about your share, because a lot of people, they're, they're looking for shares, they don't know where to look. Now, yours was right on your doorstep, so... Yeah, I mean, I, I was very lucky. Um, obviously, flying here at, uh, at Elmat, uh, you get to meet a lot of people, um, and I heard wind of the, this one was coming up. Mm-hmm. Uh, prior to that, I was uh, I was looking over all sorts of internet sites. Mm-hmm. Um, I found a lovely 172 reams at, um, at Wellsbourne. Um, okay. Which I, I was very tempted with uh, at the time, lovely aircraft. Um, so, so where are the other places you were looking, just to give people an idea where they could find the show? No idea, so I'm... No <laughs> idea. <laughs> <That's some now. laughs> Get that bit out done. What, what article? I don't even know what it's called. <laughs> well, leave this bit in for yeah, comedy. Yeah. Um, so we've got places, you've got... Um, Google. Google, yeah, Google's yeah, go- a really Googled good place it. to start. Yeah, Google yeah. it, Google it. Now, you've got your aircraft dealers like AT Aviation and that kind of thing. Sometimes they sell shares, Avbuyer. Um, what's the other one? They're not here, but... 
There was just a local share. Well, I can't, I can't even think what it was called. Facebook groups as well is a big thing now. A lot of people How advertise them on Facebook groups, yeah. Um, so, tell us how you got your share. Sorry, Dave. So, my share, um, I heard of it in conversation. Uh, okay. Did a little bit of um, a little bit of digging, a little bit of pestering, because uh, it's quite a sought-after aircraft. Yeah. Uh, there was a few people uh, quite, quite interested in it. Um, and the way I personally did it was uh, probably a little bit gun ho Luckily, I knew the people. I sort of knew a little bit about the aircraft. Um, and I just Facebook messaged uh, the guy who was selling um, okay. and said, when do you want the money? <laughs> Basically, <laughs> no, no haggling. Just no, <laughs> there, no, there wasn't wasn't really any uh, any haggling. Um, I, I popped down, had a quick chat with him, and had a look at it, and uh, okay. obviously spoke to a few other people. But it was uh, it was pretty much a done deal in in, in a few days. I think you were lucky because some people are probably already going survey, survey, all the rest of it. Mm. But you'd, the aircraft had just had pretty much a rebuild, didn't it? Had it new engine, yeah. new prop, yeah. new avionics, all kinds of stuff in it. Mm. Um, so your your next steps off there, after you'd put your offer in, um, what happened after that? Uh, so after that, uh, once a month, they have a, uh, a monthly meeting, whether it's mm. Zoom or get together. As it happened, uh, it was the Christmas period, so uh, they'd arranged to go out for a meal. So at that time, um, we all went out, had mm. something to eat, got to meet the rest of the group, and obviously they also got to meet me. And and uh, that was well, they, they still let you in. Yeah, they, they believe it or not. Yeah, they they, they still let me in. I, I, I drove the drove that night, so I only had a uh, coke. But mm. um, but no, it was. Um, it was all good, and then uh, shortly after that, then that's when I started the checkout rides. Because um, okay. obviously that, that aircraft's a little bit more complex than, than the yeah. trainers and what I was used to. Um, so it's not retractable, but variable pitch. Isn't it's it? A, that's correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so how many flights did you do in it before you felt comfortable with it? The first flight, I felt quite comfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, Derek uh, did the check ride with me, um, and, and and within the first half an hour, it was sort of getting used to the, the yeah. manifold pressure, the RPM, and controlling the prop, and yeah. just yeah. A, an extra lever, basically, which yeah. sounds easy, but it's a little bit more to just it. But to think about, af- it? after you've done um, you, you've done a few bits in it, you, you you do soon get the hang of it, and then it, it's just like flying another plane. It's it's yeah. got wings and. That's it. it. It does the same job, really. Same job, yeah. um, some of the other procedures in it, obviously, a little bit uh, are getting used to spending yeah. a bit more time with some of the navs in it uh, yeah. and whatnot. But um, but yeah, it's possibly really a little bit quicker as well, isn't it, than what you're used to? Normally, it is, so. and I think that was probably the bigger thing to get used to. Yeah. Um, you know, when you're sort of pottering around circuit at 75 80 knots and then suddenly yeah. you're doing 120 yeah, yeah. it's um yeah so, so sort of handling the aircraft is is different but again it's uh, you, you do get used to it quite quickly or, or i did okay. and did they put any um restrictions on, on you as a newly qualified pilot on that aircraft or yeah so the the club didn't uh, but the insurance company did um so being a pilot under a hundred hours, uh, they required me to do ten hours of dual flight. Yeah. Um, first of all, was the checkout, which uh, roughly took um, about three hours, mm-hmm. um, and then seven hours. Then uh, wasn't so much instructional; it wasn't at all. Um, it was either with a supervision, with a, sort of supervision somebody that was insured to fly the plane or or any uh, flight instructor. Um, but yeah, we soon got rid of rid of that. I think it was just over three weeks, and they were done. Yeah. But you, you'd flown already quite a few of our fleet anyway, hadn't you? So you were, yeah, yeah. You were quite used to kind of moving between switching aircraft, between, yeah, know, which is good. Um, okay, so a lot of students ask us about purchasing aircraft, and I sort of mixed reviews about it. Really it depends on how much you fly. So let's go through the pros and cons of of owning your own aircraft or owning a share. Um, so I think cons wise. Um, Obviously, you've got the upfront expense. So, if, if you were renting a an aircraft from a flying club, you wouldn't have to purchase a you know a huge chunk of it to be able to fly it. It's usually just a membership you're paying, and then you pay by the hour. Uh, depending on how many hours you fly, depends on whether it's viable compared to renting mm-hmm. as such. Because you, I think, for somebody like you who's doing a lot of hours, um, as opposed to the average PPL who tends to do like one or two hours a month. It's probably not worth it at that end, 
you've still got all the fixed costs coming in, haven't you? That's yeah, the thing. yeah. Um, so I think definitely if you're going to look at get shares, you know, make sure that you're doing enough flying to make it viable. Definitely. And you'd have to crunch the numbers on that. Um, obviously, if it goes into maintenance, then it might be out. I mean, there's a guy who's bought a share in a PA28. He hasn't flown it yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> in maintenance since he did that. So I'm not sure he's uh, he's that pleased about that yet. But um, one of the other things is is the um, the operating fund. So generally, these groups have a fund that you you're maintaining it out of. But if your engine was to to go kaput. For example, and you've got to find 30, 30 and a bit grand, um, that could potentially be split between the shareholders. Mm, yeah. So that's um, something to be careful of is make sure the maintenance history is good and make sure that there's a good fund there. Uh, some syndicates, like you said, have restrictions on hours, so usually something like 100 hours minimum. Um, and sometimes the syndicates don't have an instructor within the syndicate either. So mm. then you might need to find one who's willing to, to instruct on your aeroplane. Um, the only other thing about the cons wise and is shareholder disagreements. If you're in a big group, you can have up to 20 people, I believe, in an aircraft syndicate. So that's 20 people you could argue with. <laughs> <laughs> and also in those kind of instances, uh, perhaps it's more tricky to sell your share if you need to quickly. Um, it depends on the a lot on the aircraft, doesn't it? If it's a really nice aircraft that's well equipped, you probably won't struggle selling it. But if it's one with a more of a checkered history that people yeah. are, you know, the engine's a bit high in hours or whatever, and you need the cash out quickly, your, your money might be stuck there for a while, uh, which is the thing. So let's go for the uh, the pros, Dave. Tell us what you find as an aircraft owner now. What you you know compared to renting, what you think um, are the pros. So compared to renting pros, the main one for me is the availability uh, mm -hmm. and the freedom uh, yeah. with, with, with the aircraft. Um, now I can go on an app, uh, very similar to what, to what we've always done, uh, but just between the eight of us. Yeah. Um, we can obviously book as and when we want to, but because there's eight and obviously everybody's working and whatnot, yeah. it's, the availability is, is fantastic. You're the only bloke who flies it, I think. Well, pretty much <laughs> at the minute, it would seem, yeah. Um, but also the, the freedom. So, you know, if, if I was to go and rent an aircraft and I, I wanted to go cross-country somewhere, go for lunch, yeah. I'm, I'm governed on a time. And as we all know, yeah. in, in aviation, anything can happen. It yeah. can be something as silly as somebody's lost a nut on the runway and they spend three hours looking for it. And <laughs> I'm stuck. And before yeah. you know it, you know, the, the plane's not back for another student who, who's booked yeah. a lesson. Uh, so, so just taking that um, sort of worry out of it is, is, is probably the the biggest thing for me. Okay. Um, guys in the group as well, you know, you, you pick a group with nice yeah. people. You, you get to meet them. Everybody wants to just fly the plane. Yeah, right? yeah. Usually, it doesn't seem to be with this one at the minute. They like, just, just like the idea of flying. That, right? That's it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 but no, you know, if, if there's ever any questions, there's always always an answer with somebody. Yeah. Um, which is which is good and uh, again picking the aircraft you know it's most of us learning sort of high wings Cessnas things like that and I wanted something a, a little bit different I wanted a low wing and yeah I sort of had a vision in my head of what I sort of wanted to fly which is why I didn't go for the you know the 172 at, yeah. at Wellsbourne yeah um, and then equipment wise and upgrades on the planes we can all discuss it and yeah. do something and if it was something that I really wanted I could, I could pay for it myself and add it yeah. on and you know the thing isn't it with a rented aircraft you quite often get rented aircraft is in op equipment yeah, exactly in there, which, yeah you know if it was yours you might say I'll fix that or I'll upgrade it or whatever yeah um, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And yeah. then, obviously, bragging rights, you can tell them your mates that you've got, yeah, a, yeah, yeah, got yeah. a plane. Yeah, that's it. It's funny, they're not that interested, are they, when you tell them that? They, they know like... what I'm like, so no, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think they're there. Although, my dad come up, I was quite surprised. Did he? <laughs> he did. Like it? Yeah. yeah, he loved it, yeah, he had a lesson with Tom. Oh, wow. <clears throat> um, so, let's look at some advice, then, for anybody looking to buy an aircraft share. So, obviously, first thing is decide on whether you want to go equity or non-equity. You know, non mm. That's very much dependent on what's available, really. Um, generally, non-equity is pretty much like a, a flying club, but a much smaller group of people. Um, equity, then, the things to be really 
wary of, I think, is choose an aircraft that suits your purpose. So don't just buy one because it's available. Buy one that fits what you want to use it for. Yeah, so, exactly, yeah. You know, if you're buying something you want to go into short fields on and the aircraft you're looking at has got particularly bad short field performance, that's not the aircraft for you. Um, likewise, if you're planning to go to Europe all the time, you don't necessarily want to do it in a 152. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> you know, pick an aircraft that fits your purpose. Um, meet the group. Like you said, meet the group, make sure they're people that you're going to get on with because mm-hmm. you're going to share a financial interest with them. Sure. Um, get a test flight on the plane, make sure you like the aircraft, you know, or a few if you need it. Um, I think this is important, get proof of funds for the for the group. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, um, I've known so many people that have bought into aircraft and it's gone tits up, you know, and they've ended up selling it and losing money and all that mm. kind of stuff or having maintenance issues they just can't afford so i think it's really important to make sure that you know the maintenance history is good for a start so you know one thing i always go on about is get a survey don't buy a lemon you know there's yeah. there's an aircraft i looked at here which um is a polished turd if i'm being honest that's, <laughs> that's, that's how the engineer described it he says it's a shiny turd and you need to spend about 20 something grand on it so i'm like right so he says yeah basically i've just saved you about 20 grand yeah so. um so yeah so make sure you get a survey you know they don't tend to cost that much you know anywhere between sort of sort of four and four hundred and a thousand pound for a, a small airplane anyway um don't overstretch yourself financially you know if it's a, a share in an aircraft I wouldn't recommend getting a loan on it, would you? Def- definitely not, no. Um, I think if, if you take a loan out to buy an aircraft, that technically means you can't afford if something yeah, goes yeah. wrong. Um, I think the only way I, I would have, you know, if, if you were really sort of tight and trying to yeah. uh, trying to buy a plane and with, with a certain uh, bank account, then I would probably afford the plane and take the loan for the maintenance if it needed it. Yeah. Um, I, th- I think that's the only way that I, I would have, would I have mean, done it. I mean, aircraft finance tends to be bloody expensive as well. It was. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, there was a guy here who was looking at buying one outright, and he showed me the details on the plane. I was like, oh, it's, it was a 150, as happens, and it, and it looked quite nice. It had just been rebuilt. It was bloody expensive. It was like mm. 70 grand. That, but that's generally, if they're really good, new engine, new interior, all that, that's what they will fetch yeah. now. But when he'd got this finance, he was ending up paying back something like 101,000 or something. Mm. And he, he sort of told me the deal and he said, oh, you know, um, it was X amount of 100 pounds a month. And it just sounded too cheap to me. And I said, can you send me, a, you know, because he was asking about advice for it. I said, can you send me the, um, the finance quote over? And what they'd done is they'd basically, he'd put down a deposit, really low monthly payments with a massive balloon at yeah. the end. Yeah. And it wasn't on a decrease in balance either. So you were paying a shit ton of interest back. Yeah. And um, and I was, you know, I said to him, do you really want to spend 101,000 pound on a, on a 150 oh, basically? Yeah. You know, and it, it just didn't stack up. Um, so he didn't buy it, you know, but uh, but yeah, I think finance, you just gotta be really careful with it. You? So uh, yeah, it, you have. And even if you took a personal loan out to do it, I yeah, think yeah. still then you've, you've, you've got to be careful. Um, yeah. Cause the last thing you want to do is, you know, join, join a group with 10, 20 people, yeah. get on with them really well. Um, suddenly everybody needs to put five grand in for an engine, um, yeah, yeah. but you haven't got the money. And then you try and get a loan or if anything yeah. happened, then, you know, it, it, I don't think it's worth the risk. And if you were flying around and worrying about that, well, you're not flying then, you know, it's, yeah, that's the thing. I that, think it's, that's the other thing going back to the renting side of it yeah it's not yours but you haven't got that liability have you no you know you if something no. goes wrong then it's just like drop okay, it well, back off there's a key you've got another 152 because that one don't work <laughs> thing, yeah know? it's um <laughs> i've done so, that before <laughs> yeah well, it's, yeah but it, it happens doesn't it it They're does mechanical yeah things it and, does you know if you're renting them from a flying school they're getting pushed hard each month yes you know? yeah. so um I think generally you just got to weigh up your circumstance and the, the biggest thing is making sure you're doing enough hours to warrant doing it in the first you're place. Definitely, yeah, you know, definitely. Now, because these the fixed costs they don't go away you still got to pay your anchorage and your insurance and all the rest of it mm-hmm. the aircraft still needs an annual every year regardless of whether it flies or not all that yeah. stuff don't go away so so yeah i think it's it's a good thing to do as long as it fits your circumstance, I think is the message, isn't it? Really? Yeah, it's, yeah, most definitely. Yeah, if 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 you fly on a good amount of hours and yeah. um, 
there's there's um, other parts to it that you, you know you want your own plane you want that freedom then yeah i think it's a good thing if not then yeah so aviator show so um dave's kindly going to appear on the aviator show and we're going to go and rag his plane around the countryside <laughs> <laughs> on camera for you special people to watch um so we'll have some fun on there and, and thank you dave for not swearing today yeah you're welcome up um i swear a lot dave swears a lot more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> and we haven't had to do one beat for you. Maybe, maybe for me. I no, there was I one I noticed for you. Yeah, one. <laughs> <laughs> we beat. were talking about having a swear jar. But um, yeah, you won them. So. Right. Um, so yeah, great. We'll see you on the Aviator Show. And thanks for coming on this yeah, one, Yeah, you're well done. Thanks for having me. Thank you, mate. Cheers. No worries. If you like this episode, please like, subscribe and ding the bell to receive notifications of the next episode.